Hello friends, now our topic is about biomolecules. Coming to the analysis, the molecules which are present in the living things, we call it as biomolecules. Either it is organic or inorganic. What we call it as organic means, these are the molecules which are being synthesized only in the living things. Inorganic molecules are, these are the things which are present both living as well as non-living things. For example, calcium, iron will be present both in the living as well as non-living. Carbohydrates. This could be only synthesized by the living things, not by the living thing, non-living things. That is the only simple things between living and non-living and biomolecules. Coming to the analysis of chemical composition of a living organism. For example, if you take a carrot, the carrot is being composed of carotenoids, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and certain inorganic salts. In order to know what are the organic, inorganic things in, in that, we are undergoing two types of analysis. To know the living things or the organic compound, the analysis we are going is grinding analysis. Taking a living, living tissue, for example, if you take a carrot, weigh that carrot and grind it in a trichloroacetic acid, you will get a thick slurry filtrate through the cheesecloth. We call that we have been fractioned into filtrate and retentate. Filtrate is the acid soluble pool and retentate is the acid insoluble pool. We have been differentiated into these two. And next analysis for the inorganic compounds is ash analysis. For this, for example, the same carrot, you take the carrot and weigh and make it and to get the wet weight. And then you can dry, you will get the dry weight. And later that, we have to burn that. After burning, you will get the ash. Through centrifugation, means nothing but separation process, we will come to know what are the inorganic compounds are present in the carrot. For example, if it is, we get the carbon, Carbon is been always will be in the form of carbon dioxide plus H2O. So through this the water will be evaporated and carbon dioxide will be gone. The carbon we will get. Calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium. All these things will be obtained through inorganic compounds. Next, biomolecules of the cell. So the, the chemistry is the part which studies about these biomolecules. Biologically, we divide the molecules into micromolecules and macromolecules. We also call it as bio micromolecules and bio macromolecules. Coming to the next, if the molecules are more than so more uh, more than thousand daltons, so more than thousand daltons, we uh, sorry less than thousand daltons, if we call it as micromolecules, those are amino acids, sugars, nucleotides, and lipids. And if it has more than thousand daltons, so those we call it as bio macromolecules polysaccharides, nucleic acids, proteins. Coming to the next, acid soluble fraction. Acid soluble fraction is cytoplasmic con composition. Acid insoluble fraction is macromolecules of cytoplasm plus cell organelles. The components of these are water, protein, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, lipids and ions and these are their percentages. The water will be form the major percentage which is around 70 to 90 percentage. Next will be the proteins 10 to 15 percentage and nucleic acid will make 5 to 7 percentage. Carbohydrates is about 3 and lipids are 2 and ions will be from the last 1 percentage. Next, amino acids, the very very important compounds of our body, nothing but building blocks of our body. And the amino acid is the derived from the methane group. So we have CH4, right? So this is the center C and we have the H and this is the radical group. This is the variable, we also call it as variable group. R means radical. And here we have the amino group and here we have the carboxyl group. All the four sites has been occupied occupied by the C. So this is the, we also call this carbon as alpha carbon. So this is the general structure of an alpha amino acid. And coming to the basic amino acids. So based on the nature, nature polarity nature, we have the basic amino acid, acidic amino acid and neutral amino acid. The basic amino acid is lysine and the acidic amino acid example is glutamic acid and the neutral amino acid example is alanine. Next, aromatic amino acids. Phenyl alanine is an example for aromatic amino acids. So for the aromatic amino acids, we have a ring, benzene like ring structure. Next, sugars, monosaccharides, which are the simplest sugars which cannot be hydrolyzed further into a smaller sugars composed of 3 to 7 carbon carbon atoms. Triose means having 3 carbons, example glyceraldehyde. Tetrose means having 4 carbons, erythrose. Pentose having 5 carbons, ribose. 
so hexose having six carbons glucose heptose having seven carbons sedoheptulose and this is the figure for the chemical symbol for glucose and this is galactose which is present in the milk so monosaccharide have either a free carbon group or reducing sugars we call it as reducing sugars oligosaccharides when two monosaccharides are combined by a glycosidic bond we call it as oligosaccharides oligo means few next so they are named it as disaccharides trisa disaccharides means having two sugars means sucrose is the example trisaccharide having three three sugar molecules arabinose tetrasaccharide having four sugars stachyose pentasaccharide having five sugars verbascose next this is the maltose having both glucose plus glucose is equal to maltose and the bond between this is n glycosidic bond and lipids so the heterogeneous group of an organic compound water insoluble but soluble in non polar organic solvents for example this will be soluble uh, this will be soluble in petroleum so likewise so the oil will be soluble in oil the oil will not be soluble in polar compounds the water is polar so and the lipids are non polar so the non polar and polar will never mix coming to the lipids so the lipids are been divided into two types straight chain compounds fused hydrocarbon rings plus long hydrocarbon chain example cholesterol and the straight chain compounds is again divided into two categories simple lipids and compound lipids and coming to the simple lipids oils fats waxes coming to the compound lipids we have the phospholipids glycolipids and sphingolipids and this is the cholesterol and lipids are the fatty acids so this is the chemical formula for palmitic acid next fatty acids we have two types one is saturated fatty acids by butyric acid and unsaturated fatty acids linoleic acid if we have one double bond we call it as mono unsaturated fatty acids we have more than one double bond we call it as poly unsaturated fatty acids simple lipids glycerol glycerol this is the chemical formula for the glycerol formed by the esterification of glycerol with fatty acids monoglycerides diglycerides and triglycerides so fats highly uh, so i remain solid at room temperature that is butter and low melting point it remain liquid at room temperature we call uh, we call it as oils if high melting point we we call it as fats if it has the low melting points we call it as oils for example sunflower oil phospholipids when lipids have the phospho phosphorylated organic compounds then we call it as phospholipids lecithin so brains have sphingolipids so phospholipid uh, example for the phospholipid is lecithin so this is the chemical compound lecithin next nucleotides phosphorylated nucleoside adenylic acid guanylic acid thymidylic acid cytidylic acid and uridylic acid which we call it as nucleotides so n base attached to the pentose sugar then we call it as adenosine guanosine thymidine cytidine and uridine if it is phosphorylated only we call it as adenylic acid guanylic acid thymidylic acid cytidylic acid and uridylic acid so this is adenine guanine uracil thymine and cytosine so purines plus pyrimidines are the monomers so high nucleotide sorry the higher nucleotides store energy in their high energy phosphate bonds so nicotinamide plus riboflavin is equal to the coenzymes so coenzymes are non protein organic moiety of the holoenzyme which we call it as coenzymes so the vitamins will be mostly will form as the coenzymes primary and secondary metabolites so coming to the primary and secondary metabolites we have identifiable function and prons of certain metabolic pathways coming to the primary metabolites are amino acids n bases proteins nucleic acids etc the secondary metabolites are pigments for example for the pigments are anthocyanin carotenoids for the drug cities vinblastin curcumin alkaloids morphine and codeine essential oils lemongrass oil Le lectins are 
கான்கேவாலின் ஏ தெரப்பினாய்ட்ஸ் மோனோதெரப்பீன்ஸ் டா டாக்ஸின்ஸ் ஆப்ரின் ரிசின் பாலிமரிக் காம்பவுண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் ரப்பர் செல்லுலோஸ் அண்ட் கம்ஸ் ஸோ கம்மிங் டு த பயோ மேக்ரோ மாலிக்யூல்ஸ் விச் ஹேஸ் மோர் தேன் தௌசண்ட் டால்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் வெயிட் வீக் ஆர் மாலிகுலர் வெயிட் ஆஃப் மோர் தேன் தௌசண்ட் டால்டன்ஸ் வீக் ஆல் இட் ஹஸ் பயோ மேக்ரோ மாலிகியூல்ஸ் ஃபவுண்ட் இன் ஆசிட் இன்சாலிபிள் ஃப்ராக்ஷன் இஸ் நத்திங் பட் ரிட்டன் டேட் ஸோ கம்மிங் டு ஹியர் வி ஹேவ் பாலிசாக்கரைட்ஸ் நியூக்ளிக் ஆசிட்ஸ் ப்ரோட்டீன்ஸ் அண்ட் லிபிட்ஸ் கம்மிங் டு த பாலிசாக்கரைட்ஸ் வி ஹேவ் த ஹோமோ பாலிசாக்கரைட்ஸ் ஹெட்டிரோ பாலிசாக்கரைட்ஸ் ஹோமோ பாலிசாக்கரைட்ஸ் ஆர் மேட் பை சேம் டைப் ஆஃப் சுகர் தென் வி கால் இட் ஹஸ் ஹோமோ பாலிசாக்கரைட் எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் செல்லுலோஸ் அண்ட் ஸ்டார்ச் செல்லுலோஸ் இஸ் ப்ரெசென்ட் ஃபார் த பிளான்ஸ் பிளான் செல்வால் அண்ட் மோஸ்ட்லி த ஸ்டார்ச் இஸ் மீன் ஆஸ் எ ஸ்டோரேஜ் செல்லோஸ் இஸ் ஸ்ட்ரக்சரல் இன் நேச்சர் அண்ட் ஸ்டார்ச் இஸ் ஸ்டோரேஜ் இன் நேச்சர் அண்ட் கைட்டின் ஹெட்டிரோ பாலிசாக்கரைட் கைட்டின் ஸோ த கிரஸ்டேஷன்ஸ் ஆர் பீன் மோஸ்ட்லி ப்ரொடெக்டட் பை கைட்டின் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் த மோனோமர் ஆஃப் த குளுக்கோஸ் செல்லுலோஸ் இஸ் த மோனோமர் ஆஃப் த குளுக்கோஸ் ஸோ வி ஹாவ் ஆல் த குளுக்கோஸ் மாலிகியூல்ஸ் ஆர் பீன் பவுண்டட் பை கிளைக்கோசைடிக் பாண்ட் ப்ரெசென்ட் இன் த பிளான் செல்வால் நெக்ஸ்ட் ஸ்டார்ச் ஸ்டார்ச் இஸ் நத்திங் பட் குளுக்கோஸ் விச் இஸ் அ மோனோமர் ஆஃப் த குளுக்கோஸ் விச் இஸ் ப்ரெசென்ட் இன் த பிளான்ஸ் ஆஸ் எ ஸ்டோரேஜ் பாலிசாக்ரைட் கம்மிங் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் கிளைக்கோஜன் தட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ எ மோனோமரிக் ஆஃப் த குளுக்கோஸ் ப்ரெசென்ட் இன் த எனிமல் ஆஸ் எ ஸ்டோரேஜ் பாலிசாக்ரைட் இன்யூலின் இட் இஸ் நாட் இன்சுலின் இட் இஸ் இன்யூலின் which is nothing but a monomer of fructose so insulin is nothing but that is hormone so we have the reducing end and non reducing end two ends will be there so the first carbon will bind to the fourth carbon so that's why we call it as alpha 14 glycosidic bond and amylose so this is the picture of amylose amylose is an unbranched starch so next amylopectin amylopectin is branched in nature that is the difference between amylose and amylopectin so this is amylose so this is unbranched and coming to the amylopectin this is branched in nature so the structure of amylopectin is a branched starch it is having alpha 14 glycosidic linkage as well as alpha 16 glycosidic linkage here for amylose we have only alpha 14 glycosidic linkage coming to the nucleic acids we have two types one is dna and rna so this is the pentose sugar and this is the phosphate group and this is the nitrogenous base and the bond between is phosphodiester bond between the nucleotide and nucleotide it is phosphodiester bond so these are the base pairs so adenine will always bind with thymine guanine will always bind with cytosine so and the backbone is nothing but sugar and phosphate will form the backbone and ribonucleic nucleic acid rna so rna is single stranded we have the base pairs so sugar and phosphate backbone we have only single base so single stranded rna so deoxy ribose so the ribose sugar here is deoxy ribose and the ribose so dna will have the deoxy ribose and rna will have the ribose next mrna which carries the information from dna to ribose decides the sequence of amino acid next trna which carries an amino acid from cytoplasm to the ribosome next rrna forms a part of the ribosomes forms a part of seat of protein synthesis next proteins these are the heteropolymers containing strings of amino acids these are the types of proteins results from 20 amino acids depending on number of amino acid residues and sequence of amino acids coming to the structure of the proteins so this is the primary structure very linear structure we call it as primary structure and the amino acid has been linked by peptide bonds and one side you will have the carboxyl group and other side you will have the amine group and this will form the secondary structure secondary structure is of two types alpha helix and beta pleated sheet so this is alpha helix and this is beta pleated sheet and next tertiary structure so this is the tertiary structure and next quaternary structure 
so many polypeptides uniting together which will form the quaternary many tertiary structures along with many tertiary structures united to form the quaternary this is the 3d model coming to the classification proteins they are been divided into two categories fibrous and globular coming to the fibrous so polypeptide arranged polypeptide arranged in a parallel bundle for example skin silk fibers keratin and collagen Go, globular polypeptide become coiled and folded for example albumin globulin and hemoglobin proteins is again divided into two categories simple proteins and conjugate proteins coming to the simple proteins it is composed of amino acids for example histones and albumins conjugated proteins peptide chain plus factor alpha factor which we call it as conjugate proteins peptide chain plus cofactors next conjugate proteins chromoproteins sorry chromoproteins pigment along with amino acid hemoglobin lipoproteins lipids in their molecule for example egg yolk phosphoproteins phosphate group with amino acid casein of milk metalloproteins contains metallic ions with amino acids zinc carbonic anhydrase that is the best example glycoproteins contains carbohydrate with amino acids nucleoproteins contains nucleic acids with amino acid for example virus so proteins and their functions collagen it is intercellular extracellular ground substance trypsin enzymes to digest the food insulin a hormone that regulate the glucose levels gamma globulin antibody that fights against the infections and next receptors proteins that receive the stimulus and substances next glut t regulates the transport of glucose into the cells so these are the proteins and their important functions concept of metabolism the metabolic pathways are dynamic state of the body constituents we have the linear metabolic pathway and circular metabolic pathway this is the picture which depicts about the linear metabolic pathway this is the picture about circular metabolic pathway coming to the metabolism it is been divided into two types anabolism and catabolism anabolism more complex compounds are formed from a simple ones which is protein synthesis for example forming a glycogen from glucose is anabolism means building catabolism complex substance is broken into two or more smaller subunits smaller substances nothing but digestion of proteins by peptides which is catabolism anabolism means building catabolism means breakdown nothing but the same converting the glycogen to glucose is catabolism next enzymes characteristics of enzymes proteins that catalyze the biomolecular biochemical reactions in the living cells each enzyme catalyzes the reaction of one substrate each enzyme requires a specific ph and specific temperature or else the the enzyme will get denatured because the enzymes are made up of proteins they accelerate a reaction next similarities between enzymes and inorganic catalyst catalyst remain unchanged at the end of the reaction and they can be used again required is far less quantities as compared to the substrate do not initiate a reaction but rate of the reaction by lowering the activation rate do not alter the equilibrium of the reversible reaction so forms a short lived complexes with the substrates so these are the similarities between enzymes and inorganic catalyst next differences between enzymes and inorganic catalyst are all the enzymes are proteins so have a com- and have complex molecular organization inorganic catalyst are usually small and simple molecules coming to here again an enzyme catalyzes only a specific reaction the inorganic catalyst they can catalyze a number of reactions hence they are not specific for any one reaction next again enzymes enzymes action can be regulated by specific molecules here cannot be regulated by any other molecule there are more sensitive to changes in ph and temperature of the medium these are less 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 effective for the changes in the ph and temperature of the medium nomenclature of the enzymes adding a suffix ase to the substrate on which they act for example if the enzyme is acting on the sucrose we call it as sucrase if the enzyme is acting on the proteins we we add a suffix as protease etc acts to physiological activity it catalyzes for example oxidase if is undergoing oxidation dehydrogenase decarboxylase etc according to source from which they are obtained for example papain bromelain etc some have been named like tyalin trypsin etc next classification of enzymes class 1 oxidoreductases 
catalyzes the oxidation and reduction of the substances next so, so next it will cytochrome oxidase oxidases oxytochromes glycoxylate oxidases so glycolate so s reduced oxidizes yes oxidized and plus reduced so reduced plus oxidase which will give to substrate reduced plus substrate oxidase which will be converted into reduced as oxidized and oxidized as reduced so this will be done by oxidoreductase enzymes next class 2 transferases they catalyze a transfer of specific groups from one substrate to another so glutamate pyruvate transaminase so this will transfer a specific substrate to other so s g plus s is equal to s plus s g so this is being removed from here next class hydrolysis catalyzes the breakdown of larger molecules into smaller molecules with the addition of water amylase hydrolyzes into the starch amylase is the enzyme which hydrolyzes the starch means which split the starch into maltose next class 4 lyases catalyzes the cleavage of specific covalent bond that is and removal of specific groups without the use of water we call it as lyases histidine decarboxylase cleaves the histidine into histamine plus and co2 next isomerases catalyzes the rearrangement of atom in the molecule to form isomers so phosphohexo isomerase converts the glucose 6 phosphate into fructose 6 phosphate next ligases catalyzes the covalent bonding between two substrate to form a large molecule mostly involving utilization of energy by hydrolysis of atp so rubp carboxylase catalyzes the joining of rubp and co2 in photosynthesis carbon fixation so mechanism of enzyme action is through lock and key hypothesis so or induced fit model so coming to this this is the lock and key hypothesis so always the lock has to fit the key then only it get activated so this is the active site enzyme active site this is the substrate the exact should be matched with this and coming to the induced fit this is lock and key hypothesis coming to the induced fit model the enzyme active site will be will form a complementary shape of the substrate after binding so in induced fit model the enzyme will modify according to the substrate but in the lock and key model it is fit, fixed so the lock has to always fit the key or else it is not be active so mostly widely accepted model is induced fit model so catalytic cycle substrate binds to the active site of the enzyme after the binding of the substrate induces the enzyme to alter its shape and fit more tightly around the substance active site of the enzymes now in close proximity of the substrate breaks the chemical bond of the substrate that is an enzyme product complex is formed now the enzyme releases the product of the reaction the free enzyme is ready to take up the another molecule of the substrate for example we have the maltose so it has to be split into glucose and glucose this is the enzyme we have the active site now the maltose through widely accepted through induced fit model so it has to attaches to the active site now the glycosidic bond is been breaked between the maltose and now glucose and glucose is been separated and the, now the enzyme is free for one more maltose so first it is substrate enzyme now it forms the enzyme substrate complex next later enzyme product complex will be there that is not shown in this picture and next enzyme plus product so factors affecting the enzyme action for example the enzyme action will be increased with increasing in the temperature but till a fixed point for example temperature the shape of the graph will be in a form of bell shaped initially it is zero there is no any enzymatic action we are keep on increasing the temperature the enzyme activation also will get increases the enzyme activity increases till the 40 degrees celsius after 40 degrees celsius the enzyme activity will low down and it will drop so after after 40 so this 40 we call it as optimum temperature so as the temperature increases at one point of time the action also will decreases next ph ph also has same at preferred ph only there will be maximum enzymatic activity if you increase the ph there will be drop of the enzymatic activity so this is also a bell shaped graph 
So the effect of temperature and the effect of pH is a bell-shaped graph. Next, effect of substrate concentration. If we are increasing the substrate concentration, after a moment of the time, the substrate will equal to the number of enzymatic molecules. Now it will be constantly maintained. This is one more type. Next, effect of chemicals. So when binding of a chemical reduces, shut off the enzymatic activity, then that chemical we call it as inhibitors. We have two types of inhibition, competitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibition. Coming to the competitive inhibition, when the inhibitor closely resembles the substrate in the molecular structure and binds to the active site of the enzyme, we call it as just like a musical chair, who comes first, the same will be fitted to the chair, who comes first, then they will act as a inhibition or activation will be based on the, the first, the who comes the first to the active site. So that we call it as competitive inhibition, succinate and malonate. So both will form the competitive inhibitors, competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition. When the inhibitor does not competitive for the active site, then we call it as non-competitive inhibition. So this in the competitive inhibition, it interferes with the active site of the enzyme. So the substrate cannot be binded now. In non-competitive inhibitor, the changes of shape of the enzyme, so it cannot bind to substrate. This both things are quite different. Here, this there is no any change in the enzyme. But when this inhibitor is being attached, there is no any place for substrate. This is competitive inhibition. In non-competitive inhibition, it changes the shape of the enzymatic active site. So there is the substrate cannot attach to the active site. So thank you very much. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.